Few life stories involve such impossible odds, incredible love and sheer determination as Saru Briley's. Born into a poor family in central India, Saru became lost when he was just five years old. A terrifying train ride took him to the other side of the country. Saru ended up among the millions of desperate kids living on India's streets. But the love of a Tasmanian couple offered him a new life. He grew up and prospered as a young Australian, but there was always a yearning for his long lost family in India. This is the astonishing story of how Saru found them. In the mayhem that is India, it's easy to lose your way. And once lost, many never find their way back home. But after a lifetime of searching, Saru Briley has defied all the odds. It's a chance once in a billion, a million, an infinity. After 26 years apart, Saru is now reunited with the mother he last saw when he was just five. It was just such a long time since she held me in. That was just, uh, that was just so comforting. Technology and determination have taken Saru full circle. From a dirt poor childhood in India to growing up in idyllic Tasmania. And look where you ended up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the it was furthest right. place from India that you know. His journey had a beginning he could barely remember. It was like I could never imagine this to happen in a lifetime. And an ending he will never forget. Sometimes miracles do happen, and this is one of them. This epic tale begins in the most unremarkable of places. A dusty village in central India. Kandwa is where Saru was born and spent the first five years of his life. This should have been your life. It could have been my life. I could have, uh, you know, not got lost and uh, stayed here and I would have probably been married by now. It's a strange children. thought, isn't it? How differently your life would have turned out. Very different. <laughs> Saru was born into one of the poorest families in town. His mother, Fatima, had been deserted by her husband and she struggled just to keep Saru, his sister, and two brothers alive. I, I could see at times when she sat down in the room, in the dark room where I grew up, and just crying, thinking, you know, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna feed um, my children? It's, it, it's a memory that uh, I can't ever forget. Saru's eldest brother, Guru, was his idol and the closest he had to a father. He always held my hand when I walked with him. I sort of, you know, put my head up and looked up at him whilst we were walking and it was just a big smile. It was almost like security and, and I'm safe and, and I'm with him. One evening, when Saru was just five, the boys headed for the local railway station to scavenge for food and loose change. It was late and Saru was tired, so Guru told him to rest on a bench, promising to return soon. It was the last Saru would see of his brother. Well, that's the last memory I've got of him. Is it a tough one? Yeah, it is, a, it is a tough one. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard for me because, uh, you know, I loved the whole of my family, but he, I was just so close to my brother. When Saru woke up all alone, he panicked and jumped on the nearest train, believing Guru must be on board. There was nowhere to be seen. I was really hoping that he was on the train, but, but he wasn't. I was so scared. Five-year-old Saru couldn't know that the train would take him nearly 2,000 kilometres across India to one of the most populated and unforgiving cities on earth, Calcutta. I was so little and everyone was shoving and pulling and I was just a tiny little boy. But uh, I was just running up and down and asking for help. And there was no one who could help you? No one. I just cried and, um, and cried and, and called out to my brother, but, you know, he was, he was never there. Twenty-six years later, Saru is retracing his astonishing life. Life on the pitiless streets of Calcutta. Do you look around at all these little kids? They're dressed in rags, they're skinny, and see yourself? Yes, I do, but as I remember myself back then, I just had a, a little shorts and a, a top that had about two or three buttons, and that's it, and I was just grimy and dirty as. Every day was a matter of life and death for little Saru. Twice, he almost drowned while washing in the river. Rescued by strangers. He survived on scraps of stolen food, sleeping on the streets, and trying to avoid the teenage gangs who would beat him. Don't go somewhere where there's danger. Don't go somewhere where you think bad things are going to happen. At five years of age, you had to rely on your instincts. Yes, I had to, yeah. You sort of lived a day at a time. Was there no hope? Back then, I didn't know what hope was. <laughs> but ultimately, the thing that I wanted the most was to be uh, with a family because I know that I'm not going to find my family again. Saru would find a family of sorts in this tiny orphanage. <laughs> Out of all of those children, do you remember Saru? I do. Because <laughs> I spent a lot of time with them. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs Saroj Sood, now in her 80s, was Saru's saviour. One of thousands of lost children she has rescued from the streets of Calcutta. It's so nice to be walking along holding Mrs. Sud hand again. <laughs> yes, well, it's just, uh, you know, 26 years ago she was holding my hand. Holding and, it. Uh, tight, holding tight. And taking me to salvation. And thanks to Mrs. Sud, Saru would get a chance at a new life with a loving family in far away Australia. What did you think when you saw the, the green trees, the mountains? There was that wow, you know, oh my God, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what is this place here? A brisk autumn day on Hobart's Derwent River with Saru's parents, Sue and John Briley. You live on this side, don't you, of the harbour? Yeah, yeah. A quarter of a century ago, they reached across the world to adopt the boy who became their son. And all he'd do is just pull the sheet down, have a look around, then he'd go back under again. And I thought, oh, far out, he must be absolutely petrified. And yes, there was a little mound in the bed. <laughs> that is our new son. No, that is my second piece. Oh, is it? 
Saru was now Australian, with two parents who cherished him and his brother Mantosh, who was also adopted from India. Saru excelled at sports, at school, and had lots of friends. But there was still a lost Indian boy inside, whose memory was scattered with unforgettable images of another family, another mother. When was that moment in your life when you decided, I need to know what happened to them? I need to know where I grew up? Well, it was always within me. And, you know, when I'd go to sleep, I'd just project to my mother and sister that I'm still alive, I'm still here. And there will be a day, you know, hoping that we will be together again. And that hope would have withered and died if not for the arrival of a new technology that offered Saru an intricate view of India from his home in Hobart, Google Earth. One of my friends said, oh, you should have a look at this. It's Google Earth. It's amazing. <laughs> but then I just thought, well, I've got such a bank of images and memories. Perhaps I could use this new technology and just, just at least try it. But he'd set himself an almost impossible task. Saru was looking for a one-room hut in a country spanning three million square kilometres. And when you look at India, it's so massive, that's impossible. This is the seventh largest country in the world, mm. and you don't even know the name of the town you're from. No. It's madness. It is. <laughs> Total madness. It is, but I was looking for a specific image. And it's like that image is, uh, is like a small puzzle, uh, putting, you know, 2,000, 5,000 picture puzzle together. One of those little puzzle pieces is where you're from. Coming up. I think I was just obsessed. Saru's relentless quest. When I picked this railway line, I thought I'd just have a go at it. The agony. You thought all this searching had come to nothing. Yeah. The ecstasy. And the incredible reunion. Give your son, take good care of him. That's next on 60 Minutes.